Okay, hi guys. Um, so this is uh, the next um, lecture in our series. So we're looking at glass. Okay, so um, in this lecture we're looking at materials and we're looking at the material properties of glass. So first of all, this is a definition from the glossary of terms. So make sure you know it, that glass is a hard, brittle, and typically transparent amorphous. Now amorphous is an interesting word. Remember that when you add a in front of something, it means without, right? So amorphous and morph, morph means form. So it is without form. Essentially, it's not crystalline. So it's, it's um, the molecules in it are not lining up in a regular pattern, which is what the definition of, of crystalline is. Okay, so it's an amorphous solid that is made by rapidly uh, cooling a fusion of sand, soda, and lime. Okay, um, and that's for soda lime glass. There are other types of glass too. Okay, so this is a, an example of crystalline. You've got nice orderly patterns to the, um, the molecules. An amorphous solid is going to have random patterns. Okay, do watch this video. It's really good. It, it explains why glass is transparent, but it also shows you, you know, this idea of crystalline and amorphous. Okay, so please do watch this video. It's about four minutes, so it's, it's not too long. Okay. Let's talk about uh, different types of glass. So the first type of glass we're going to talk about is the one that you're most used to, which is called soda lime glass. Okay, and that's basically you know if you have a cup in your in your cabinet, um, that's soda lime glass. Bottles are soda lime glass. Jars are soda lime glass, and your windows are, are soda lime glass. And this is the composition of them. One thing to understand is that glass actually. Um, up until pretty recently, was a, was a very, very expensive item. Most people did not have glass items in their houses up until probably the 19th century. So we're talking like the 1800s. Um, you know, if you go far enough back in time, they were absolutely luxury items. So you would not have glass if you did not have a lot of money. Um, and so finding glass in, you know, say a building or something like that, in an archaeological site from, I don't know, Roman times means, means that you're in a high-status building. So that would be, uh, you know, a very expensive house. Um, most people didn't have windows with glass. So that, that did not happen until, again, very recently. So just try to understand that glass up until very recently was, was quite expensive. And the first type of glass that really people um, made was the soda lime glass. Okay. Um, this, by the way, if you click on it, it will give you a... Um, it will take you to a, uh, an information sheet. Okay, so that'll take you to an information sheet. All right, let's go on to the next thing. This is a different type of glass. This is called borosilicate glass, and basically you're going to add a bit of boron to it, so boron oxide to it. Okay, again, it's still mostly silicon dioxide, which is essentially beach sand, um, but uh, with boron. Okay, and from that, it basically will make it so that the the um, the glass won't expand as much. Okay, and and that will keep it from shattering. Okay, and so Pyrex. Whenever you see Pyrex, it means it's a glass that can be heated, and so we use this in lab equipment, but also we use it in cookware. So this is Corning um, Corning cookware, Pyrex cook cookware. Okay, and, and you can heat this. It's just like a regular pot. Okay, here we go. We'll move on to the next thing. Fiberglass. So fiberglass is basically still, it's soda lime glass, but it's drawn into very, very, very thin fibers, which are flexible because they're so thin. Um, uh, you can watch this video. It shows you how they make fiberglass. It's kind of an interesting process to make. Um, we also make lots of different things out of fiberglass, especially if you, if you mix it over with epoxy resin, you can create some interesting forms. So for instance, this boat hull right here is made out of fiberglass. This tub right here is made out of fiberglass with epoxy resin on top of it. And then um, the surfboard here is made with uh, fiberglass on the outside and epoxy resin. This is just a, a fun thing. It's a bit of nostalgia from, from my youth. This is a commercial um, from Canada about people using fiberglass pink in, insulation in their, their houses. And it's just it's kind of a funny little commercial about, about uh, how you can save money. Okay, next type of glass that we're going to look at is fiber optic glass. So this is glass, and, and you can watch this video to see how it's made. But this is glass that is stretched into 
uh, fibers and they have optical properties. Essentially, it, it allows light to bounce back and forth inside. So the light will just bounce back and forth inside this, uh, this fiber and it can transmit light. And, and, you know, anytime you are on the internet, anytime you make a phone call, that's, you know, you are basically using fiber optic. So this is the way that we transmit data around the world now because um, it's much more efficient. Light, uh, it's, it's a lot lighter weight and light travels faster than electricity through, um, you know, the old way that people used to do things was to send it down copper wires. You'd send electrical signals down copper wires. Uh, light can travel at 300,000 kilometers per second. So this is why we use fiber optic cables now because it's much faster. It's much more efficient. You can send a lot more data um, down a fiber optic cable than you, than you can a copper cable. Um, it's also lighter, which makes it so that you can, you know, uh, it's easier to just deal with and cheaper. Okay, leaded glass. So this is another type of, of glass, um, and it's, it's quite beautiful. But basically what they're doing with leaded glass is they're adding lead oxide to the, the glass. And this gives uh, the glass a much more clear um, optics to it. And then if you facet it, and these are these, you know, little, you know, flat parts on these petals of this flower, if you facet it, you get um, light refracting in different ways and it makes it quite beautiful. And so if you've ever seen something like Swarovski's um, glass, in, I don't know, they, if you go to Jetta Airport, they sell it at the uh, duty free, right? Um, it's basically lead glass. Now, um, they do make crystal, like lead crystal glass out of that. So you might see, these are a couple examples of lead crystal glass. Um, there was there's some worry that that lead can leach out of it, but uh, you know as long as you're not drinking out of it every day, um, it, it's fine. So it's they use this on special occasions. Okay, safety glass. So safety glass is basically it is soda lime glass. So you'd have two sheets of soda lime glass, and in the middle you're going to be putting a layer of plastic. So it's a thin layer of film, and basically what happens is the um, glass, if it shatters, will, um, will stick to the film and won't come off the film. Okay, here's an example of that. So you can see exactly how this kind of glass breaks. And this is the kind of glass that you have, for instance, in your car. So your car has a, a layer of plastic in between a couple of panes of glass so that, um, that it won't shatter and shoot glass shards everywhere. If it does shatter, which it will shatter, but it won't, sh the, the little glass shards will stick to, the, um, stick to the plastic and won't shoot all over you and cut you up. So that's uh, safety glass. It's kind of an interesting video. It's about one minute long. Go ahead and watch it, and uh, you can see how they make it. Okay, let's talk about transparency. So a property of glass, in fact, what we're going to do is spend some time talking about properties of glass. So transparency is the ability to let light uh, transmit at, with minimal scattering, allowing a clear view through the material. And if you, the video at the, on the first slide of this lecture, you saw that, uh, you know, you saw how that happens. And basically it has something to do with the, you know, on, on crystalline substances, there are, um, planes between the, the crystal grains, which will scatter incoming light. Um, because glass is amorphous, it doesn't have those, um, those planes, and so it scatters less light. Okay, and so, you know, it's, glass is transparent. Okay, um, glass is chemically inert, so it lacks, lack, it does not react with other materials. So glass is basically inert, so you can put different materials into it, and it won't react with those materials. Um, so I've done a lot of like, inert, you know, inert and then the opposite of inert. So the opposite of inert is highly reactive and the most reactive um, element on the periodic table is fluorine. So if you want to watch this video, it's up to you if you want to watch it. It's just kind of interesting. They show you how fluorine will um, react with different things. Um, and it's, it's the most reactive um, element in the periodic table. Now, one thing it, that's interesting is hydrofluoric acid actually will dissolve glass. So you cannot store hydrofluoric acid in glass. You have to store it in plastic. Okay, it's non-toxic, so that means that you're not going to have any breakdown products uh, and they're not gonna react with things around them. So, the, you know, for instance, you can have baking 
pans and stuff like that 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 you would cook your food in at high temperatures and chemicals from the uh, the container aren't going to leach into the food so it's a it's a great thing for storing food and things like that in these by the way are symbols for toxicity for toxic chemicals and stuff like that so this is the biohazard uh, symbol this is radioactive and this is toxic okay okay biocompatible so this is uh, the product ensures uh, the continued health of a biological environment so again um, glass is biocompatible that means that you can put living things in it and it's not going to really affect them um, this is a, an example of a chemical that is not biocompatible um, beryllium which you probably you know it's the what it's the fourth or fifth maybe it's the fourth um, element in the periodic table but it's apparently very toxic so this would be something that is not biocompatible go ahead and watch this video if you want it's uh it shows you how they use these beryllium shields right here to um because i guess beryllium is uh doesn't let it doesn't uh, scatter x-rays so you can use it to to x-ray crystallography glass is hard so it's resistant to scratching right so it's hard to scratch glass Something like acrylic is quite soft and easily scratched. And this is why we have that you know, plastic film on acrylic in the design hub, because we don't want to take that off until we're using the acrylic because acrylic scratches so easily. So it's, it is not scratch resistant, whereas glass is quite scratch resistant. That doesn't mean you can't scratch glass. Glass can be scratched by something harder than it. So for instance, like diamonds are the hardest substance on earth, and you can use diamond to scratch glass. Um, but, uh, you know, there are lots of things that are not harder. You know, most of the things in our daily lives are not harder than glass. So therefore, therefore, they will not scratch them. Okay. Now, part of being hard means that you are also brittle. So being brittle means that it's easy to break something into sharp shards. Okay. So, you know, this is a, a glass light bulb. Somebody's dropping and you can see it shattering into a bunch of uh, sharp shards. This is a plastic light bulb, and you could deform this. You could squeeze it and deform it, and it wouldn't shatter. So usually something that is hard is also very brittle. So for instance, diamonds are actually very hard, but they are very brittle. If you hit a diamond with a hammer, you will shatter it into a bunch of little diamond shards, okay? Uh, because they are that incredibly brittle. They're hard to scratch, but they're brittle. So that's, that's a key understanding is the idea of what does brittle mean? Hard things are usually brittle. Um, things that are, are more tough tend to be uh, withstand deformation. Okay, aesthetic appeal. So glass is beautiful, right? Like here's a beautiful glass vase right here. It's it can be blown and colored and, and made into beautiful forms, right? So it's 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 got a, a very favorable in terms of appearance. This is beautiful. And then here's my attempt to show you something that is not as appealing. This is a uh, my uh, black star soda can that I drank earlier and a uh, hibiscus flower. But this, this vase is not, not anywhere as appealing as this vase over here. Okay, so aesthetics have a, an important impact on people too. And glass can, is very aesthetically appealing. Glass is a good insulator of electricity. So it reduces the transmission of, a, of an electrical charge. And they use it on high, um, high power, uh, the power lines, the high voltage power lines, they'll use these glass insulators to make sure that their um, that that uh, electricity isn't flowing where it doesn't need to flow. Okay, so these are called insulators. Um, the opposite of an insulator is a conductor. So a conductor will transmit electricity. So inside these wires would be copper, and that copper is a conductor of electricity. Okay, glass is cheap, right? So to understand that, it's, you know, it's made out of sand, right? And sand is fairly abundant. And, and also, sand is made out of the two most abundant chemicals in the Earth's crust. So the Earth's crust is made out of primarily oxygen. So it's, it's about almost half oxygen and then mixed with other things. And, and one of the first things that it's mixed with is silicon. So glass is made out of silicon, and this is what silicon looks like. Oxygen is, you know, there's no point in me putting a picture of oxygen, but, you know, oxygen is is uh, right in front of your face right now, so have a look at it. Um, so silicon and oxygen mixed together give you silicon dioxide, which is what beach sand is. So 
um, glass is very cheap because, well, it's cheap now because we've got the process of making it down. Remember I said at the beginning that historically it wasn't as cheap, uh, but it's cheap now because the process is, there's a, abundant resources of, for it and we can easily make it. So um, glass is comparatively cheap. All right, well, that's it. Thanks for watching.